All right, so let's open up in a word of prayer here. Lord God, thank you for bringing everybody here to hear your word and not my word, Lord. Lord, I pray that you give me the strength to speak your word and speak it boldly, Lord. Lord, we just come before you and we humble ourselves today. And thank you for being who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. <clears throat> So today I'm going to be opening up to, some people already know this passage pretty well, but we're going to open up to uh, 1 John, or not 1 John, John chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, I just got to get to it myself. All right. Hmm? Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made or made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Alright, so... First off, we all know who Je who the Word is, right? It's Jesus. Now that that is a blessing, isn't it? He made all things. In the beginning was the Word. You know, there was nothing. There was there wasn't the light. There wasn't the darkness. There was nothing. There is an an eternal expanse of nothingness that stretched from this way to that way. Yet God filled the eternity up with his presence. Now, can you think about that? God filling up the eternity and still having more of his presence left over. That's the word of God. He's infinite, isn't he? He's beyond our imagination and what we can think of or who he is. And just continuing on here in verse 14 here, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we behold his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's who Jesus is, isn't it? Full of grace and truth. And this has kind of touched me in a lot of ways, this passage, because I just want to share this story, and this is kind of like the premise of my message here in a lot of ways. I was just kind of in my prayer time with God, you know? And have you ever, like, you know, you're thinking of a loved one or something, and you, you got this image in, their, in your mind of who he is. You know, you got a picture. He may have a goatee. They may be a little child or a granddaughter or a grandson. And you're just like, yeah, you're thinking about them, and you're loving them in your mind and everything. And I'm just kind of coming to the Lord as like, Lord, it's kind of hard to focus on what it seems like nothing at, this, at that time. It's just, I was just being me, you know? And I wasn't expecting God to show me who he was, because I had seen glimpses before I had of him in dreams and in visions. And so... But I didn't have like a full picture of him. It was only glimpses here and there. And it was just what God, God decided to speak to me at that moment in time. And he said, my image is my word. Wow. That, that just kind of hit home for me. My image is my word. Now, you got, you got to get that to sink in, because it's kind of been sinking in to me for a while here now. And just that thought, like, oh, yeah, it, it's kind of like a whoosh. Uh -huh. yeah. In the I beginning. Actually, I actually understand that one there, bro. <laughs> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Sorry, Matt, to jump on. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I know sometimes uh, a lot of people want to say, well, obviously, yes, I love the King James, so what I'm saying is I'm not going to mock it. I'm not mocking it. But some people want to say, in the beginning was King James. You know? 
but what is it? It's the word of God. You know, I just got to repeat this again. My image is my word. You know, he speaks on a, uh, to us a lot through his Bible, doesn't he? But sometimes we can get distorted and things kind of get twisted up as we go along in this walk. And so we kind of got to get back to that simplicity of who he is. He's the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. So when you want to love on Jesus, you got to go to his word. It's not just, a lot of us, I, I think I've been in that situation a lot. It's like, Jesus, I want to see you. You know? How many have prayed that, especially as a child? Yeah. But Jesus was telling me, is like, my image is my word. And I'm just kind of repeating that a few times because... That just got to sink in there with you. I, I think, it, maybe it's just me. I'm still kind of like, it's still bubbling up in me in a bit here. Because this is something like uh, new this week that God kind of spoke to me about. And then it's just kind of like, maybe that's why I'm preaching on this. Because it's just like, okay, this is cool. You know? It took me 40 years to find that out. <laughs> I think it's something like when God speaks to you, you understand it in such a different light than when you first understood it. Because God brings revelation when he speaks. It's kind of like when you're reading through the Bible. You've read that passage so many times, but you're in that certain circumstance of your life where that word hits you like a brick and you have revelation like nobody's business. I'm sure some of you that have been around the walk a long time have understand what I'm talking about right there. And even those that haven't been too long in the walk. But God is awesome. All right, I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 here. And we're going to go to verse 12. And the Lord spoke spoke unto you out of the midst of the fire. He heard the voice of the words, but saw no uh, similitude. And that's an image. All right? I just want you guys to get that understanding there. He didn't, ha he didn't show an image. It was just fire. All right? And only ye heard a voice. It is only thing that they saw was the fire. They didn't see no image. All they heard was the voice of God Almighty. And sometimes we're like, we're going through this walk, and we feel like, well, God, where are you? I, I know you've spoken to me before. And what God's saying, he's been inside of you the whole time. You just got to open up to him. Open your ears to hear. You know? And continuing on, and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them um, upon two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you the statutes and the judgments, that ye might do them in the land, which, whether ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourself, for ye saw no manner of similitude or image on the day that the Lord spoke unto you in Herob, sorry if I mispronounce that, out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourself and make a grave image, the similitude of a figure, the likeness of a man or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl and flieth in the air, and it continues on. I'm not going to continue, but you guys get the understanding here. Maybe now you can understand why God doesn't always show himself the way we want him to show himself. It's not to say, I I'm distant from you. It's that I don't want you to be corrupted. And so many times, I mean, there is one instance in the Bible when... Israel in the desert wasn't doing very good. And they may they provoked the Lord. 
And so the Lord sent a whole bunch of snakes to bite them. And what did Moses have to do? He had to make an image of a staff, kind of like a cross with the snake on it. And that's supposed to like represent Jesus. But you know what ended up happening? They started treating that as a god later on in the scriptures. It even talks about how one of the kings of Israel had to destroy it because they made that a god. Yeah. How often times can we get sidetracked with the things of the Lord and make it into a god? And what did he say? And that is a perfect example why God didn't show himself except through the fire. It is because they didn't want them to be corrupted. And you, just with that example of the snake on the pole that was supposed to be an example of Christ dying on the cross, they, Israel, corrupted themselves. And sometimes we're going through this walk and God is like, where are you? And sometimes we say, well, it's, uh, you just got to have faith. Well, yeah, you do have to have faith. But you also got his word to go with it. You have his word to carry you along. You know, he says you've got to hide his word in your heart. And who is the word? That's Jesus. And so when you're hiding his word, you're hiding his image. You're hiding God in your heart. I mean, that's something powerful, isn't it, right there? Do you understand the, com not complexity, the complexity of simpleness? <laughs> I guess is kind of the way I put it. Simplicity and Yes, that's right. I'll get you to say it right. Yeah. <laughs> but glory to God, you know, he has been shown to be faithful throughout the years. We may have not you know, seeing a man standing right next to us, a God standing next to us, we may not have even seen an angel. Maybe we have seen angels in our lifetime. But God is still God. He is the Word. He spoke everything into existence. And now I want to go to Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2 we're going to start off with here. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? For all these things have my hands made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. First off, the first point I want to make out here is God saying about his temple. What is he saying? I made all that stuff you made with the temple. The footstool is the earth. The heaven is my throne. I made all that. Where is my rest? It's not in the temple that you built with man's hands. It's not in the church that you built with man's hands. It's not in all these other denominations. His place is in the throne room of God. Yet he came down as a man to die for our sins. And what does it go on here? Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. And who is the word? It is Jesus. First off, I kind of looked it up a bit here. The poor. I was looking it up. It also means humble. What is a contrite spirit? I was looking that up. And sometimes a, a definition online, a lot of times we mean remorseful of our sins. You know, first off, we have to be humble to admit things, don't we? You ever seen a prideful person actually admit to something? If they admit it to it, they're just like, wow, they're not really, they're just kind of more mocking, aren't they? They do this, they apologize if I offended you. Yeah. They don't apologize for what they did. 
but contrite spirit. Sorry for your sins. You know, a lot of times we don't always understand all our sins. Once we get saved, God takes us through a process called sanctification. I don't know if anybody have, has you ever heard of that. That's where God starts peeling those things in your life out of your life that are no good for you. That's when he starts taking those pruning hooks and starts trimming stuff out of your life. And, you know, when someone takes something and snips you here or snips you there, it hurts. But he's saying, I'm doing this for your good. Because that branch is just going to eat away at you. It, it, it's just stealing nutrients from your life. It's a dead branch. All it is is doing is soaking up nutrients that I could have been providing you. So are you going to be willing to cut that branch off? Well, here we're going to go on here a bit more in the scriptures. Number three, and this is talking about a different person here. Someone that has kind of set up a, their own image of stuff. He that kills an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cuts off a dog's nut, neck. And he that offereth an obligation as if he's offered swine's blood. Obviously, swine is pig. And that's unclean. The grain offering? Okay, thank you. And he that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Well, obviously, idols are definitely bad, aren't they? But here's the thing. They're, they're changing what God has set up completely. And just continuing on here. You have chosen your own ways, and you, their soul delighted in their abominations. The one thing that Israel had a problem with was a golden calf. Now, I don't know how many of you have read in the Bible, but after the kingdom split, they actually made two golden calves. Even though it's said in the Bible not about how Aaron had a golden calf and it was a great sin on Israel. Yet, one of the kings, he made a golden calf. One was destroyed, the other one remained. And so they can treat that golden calf like a god. And so what did they start doing? They cha started changing who God was. They started changing his word into something that wasn't supposed to be. And I shared with you about the snake and the cross. How they slowly changed that over time into something that was into a god. How many times can we change the word of God and make it into another God? We, want, we like the way it sounds here in the Bible, but we don't like how it sounds here in the Bible. And then we go on one scripture and we hyperize that one scripture to the point where it's not even what God intended it to be. And in so doing, you've made your own image and you have basically created your own God. And so it's time to get back to the simpleness and the profundity, as you, uh, Jeff has said. Profundity? profundity? Okay. <laughs> of who God is. You know? He is awesome. He is worthy to be praised. But what, is, what happens to those that reject? Right, we'll just continue here on verse 4. I will also, this is God, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. Well, first off, God's calling, but they refused when God called. And when I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and choose that in which I delighted not. And so what is God saying? Why did he choose their own delusion and cause their fear to come upon them? Because when he spoke, they didn't listen. When someone's speaking to you about the word of God, are you listening? 
When God's trying to deal with you on a subject or a matter that's in your life, and let's face it, just because we may be old doesn't mean you still have you still have issues with God that God wants to deal with. Are you refusing to deal with their issues in your life? Because God wants to deal with them. Why? Because he loves you. you. You all have granddaughters, grandsons, and you like you always want them to do the right thing of what you think is the right thing to do. Why? Because you want to see them good. You want to see the best out of them. And so you say, you got to do this, you got to do this. Well, God's telling you, you got to do this, you got to do this. And why? Because he's doing it for your betterment. He's not doing it because he hates you. <coughs> but he does it because he loves you. And that he cares about you. And so when he's speaking his word, he's speaking life into your life because he loves you. Not because he hates you. And so, yeah, we kind of get that grumpy attitude with God. It's like, God, I really don't want to. But are you going to deny God's word? Now, there's been times God's spoken to me. I was like, God, I'm sorry for this sin. And God would say, and just deal with God, you're being selfish. I was like, <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, okay. That kind of cut deep right there, didn't it, to me? But oftentimes, what is, sin can be selfish. The things that we do to others can sometimes be very selfish because what are we doing? We're doing what we want. When you're in a marriage, you don't always get to do what you want because you've got two partners. And I was after I kind of come came to that one conclusion, you know, I was kind of like settling down, and it's like I knew God was right. I'm not going to argue with God just because I'm upset what He said, because I knew it was truth. So I wasn't going to reject that truth. But God spoke, was speaking. It's like two cannot walk unless they are in agreement, and that was kind of what He was speaking to me after I was kind of calming down sometime. Two cannot walk unless they come into agreement. So you got to come into agreement with God's word. Now, granted, I've just spoken to you about how we can distort God's word. Now I'm talking to you about how you got to come into alignment with God's word so that you can walk with him. And a lot of times, this is part of what you would call sanctification in one's life. If you've gotten saved, you change maybe in the first year of your life or the second year of life, but you haven't changed at all since then, and it's been 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and you still stay the same, that's not a walk. That was just, I don't know what that was. But it wasn't part of sanctification, which is part of every Christian's heritage. Because you're supposed to walk with God. And if you're walking with God, two cannot walk together unless they come into agreement. And God's God wants to take you, and he knows how fragile you are. And so he's got to work on you sometimes slowly with some people, and sometimes he's, he can work really fast with some people because they, they can handle that heat. You know? My question is, how much heat can you stand? You know, Israel, they dealt with it, God, through that, they saw that fire of God speaking from the mountain, and they would trembled. And they couldn't, they couldn't hardly stand that presence of God. Can you stand that kind of presence of God? The fire of God consuming a mountain, speaking to you and trembling the entire earth itself. Can you stand that kind of refining fire in your life? Or does God got to kind of be like, okay, uh, this person is kind of uh, weak, so I got to take care of them slowly? Or can God take care of you faster? And sometimes you got to change your attitude. 
about how you're dealing with God and how you're really doing your walk. And you've got to have that warrior mindset. Not, granted, not all of you probably have been in the army, but that doesn't mean you're in the Lord's army. And you still got to fight the fight of faith here and stand up for truth. And be bold. It's like, God, this is going to be rough. I know it is. But I'm going to walk through it with you. I'm going to walk that through the fire of God. How many want to walk through the fire of God? Or, or Maybe you tremble at the word of God and that thought kind of scares you. That's all right. God's still there. He still loves you. And he's still going to start preparing you for that fire to go through. You know, oftentimes, you know, when you're going and you're going to get ready for battle, God trains you. Some of you, God may be training you to do something else in life. I mean, yeah, you may feel like your life's just about over. But maybe he's got you training you right now to do some spiritual warfare. Or maybe he's training you still to prepare you for the life to come. Because let's face it. Once this life is over, we still got the eternity. So a lot of you, God is still preparing you for eternity to come. Your life isn't over yet. It is just beginning. Or beginning. For the Lord is good, isn't he? So, I started off basically saying, it's like, I'm just going to say this again from earlier. Uh, my image is my word. If you want to get to know God and you want to get close to him, you've got to study his word and pray. Because in prayer is sometimes when he speaks to you. You know, I mean, if you pick up the phone, you can do all the talking, but if you do none of the listening, you're going to end up doing what... This part happened to you. They, God spoke, but they didn't listen. A lot of times you can go to prayer, just pray, but you're not listening to God. Are you listening to his word that he's trying to speak over your life? You know, this is the basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what it is, the Bible. And a lot of times when... Uh, Let's say you, God has somebody for you to get married to. I'm not saying you all are going to be getting married, but that's not in the Bible. Let's see. Michael J. Hill shall marry... Well, it doesn't say that in the Bible who I'm going to be getting married to. Does it? And that's when you got to learn to hear the voice of the Lord so he can direct your steps in every direction that you go in life. And that's why the word of God is important to listen to him. And he's going to back up what he speaks through his word. And if you need a confirmation, he's going to give you a confirmation on things. And so the Lord is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. And continuing on, I just want to kind of uh, probably go, probably not as much more, but yeah. So the next uh, verses, I just kind of want to go through them, is Matthew 6, 22 and 24. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy, thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon, or that's man, or how to put it, the devil. And the one thing I know uh, through the sanctification that God has taught, taken me through in my life is one of, how do I say it, changing how I view stuff a lot of times. And that's even through entertainment and television. 
and stuff of that nature. How many times do you guys do you tune out God as you're watching something? How about inviting God to watch it with you? Or are you too embarrassed? Maybe you don't even understand uh, what's behind it, those things sometimes. Ask God, hey God, what's behind this movie? Is it of you? Is it of the devil? You know, at, when you watch something and, and, and just entertaining yourself, what is behind that? Is it God or is it the devil? And a lot of times, I, for me, God would, I would sometimes watch something in the middle of the night, God would give me a dream about what's really up with that movie or that character or a certain thing. And sometimes it's not always good. Now, there has been times where once God did lead me to watch a movie. I can't remember the name of the movie. But what it was, uh, was basically these men had crash landed their plane in like this uh, snowy area. So it was all snow everywhere and everything. Desolate place. And so this movie was about how these men traveled through these woods as these wolves were literally taken one by one out of them out. And God was kind of showing me, as you're traveling this path and following my word, the enemy is going to be hot on your trail. And the movie ends basically, close to the end of the movie, one man, he basically just sat down, it's like, I'm done. It's a younger man compared to the older man. It's like, I'm done. I don't want to deal with this struggles anymore. And I was kind of like a period in my life. You know, I was kind of like, kind of down. It's like, I kind of felt like under the pressure, you know. And God was kind of showing me, it's like, those wolves are the demons coming at you. At the end of the movie, it shows the wolf, top of the wolf, you know. And then it shows... Because he basically, as he was keep on walking, he ended up into the den of the wolves as he kept walking, trying to get out. And that's the way the struggle of this spiritual life is. As we keep walking, we're going to be facing the devil himself and walking into his den. But you're not alone, are you? You have Jesus and his word to strengthen you upon, upon your walk. And at the end of the movie, it showed the guy's hand literally taking hold of the wolf. And God was just kind of showing me, he's like, just keep on persevering. Keep on going that walk of faith. Follow my word. And the last scripture I want to just end on, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, and this is basically me wrapping up right here. Enter ye into the straight gates, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Narrow is the way, the way is the truth, the light, Jesus. That is the truth of it all. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so we're time to close up, but God is awesome, is he not? Amen. All right. Been enough preaching for a while, huh? Singing. 33 minutes. Worshiping God.